Hey everyone, this is Walter, back here once again with yet more stories and posts from Two Worlds. I'll link to the first video in the description, and you should watch it if you haven't, but Two Worlds was an extremely proud goon, a member of the internet forum Something Awful. But he got called out for his weird behavior in a hell dump thread in 2007. Last time we had a look at the persona governing his lust, the Brute. But now let's have a more general look at his personas, and especially look at the one he calls the Party Man, and we'll hear about goon cons. So let's begin with classic something awful, two worlds. One force cancelling out the other. Even within me, even all my personas, the saint counteracts the brute, Mr. C counteracts the party man, the puppet master counteracts the tempest, six personas, always the number six, and in the center, me. Yeah, so Mr. C was his teacher persona, it's what he was when he was at his job teaching. So let's have a look at the opposite, the party man. It's the persona that he's using when he has a few drinks and gets white girl wasted. St. Pat's weekend at a frat party. I'm not a fratty, I was just invited to a social by a friend who's a frat boy. I'm drinking my drink of choice, Smirnoff Twisted Apple. Everyone else is having beer. I have this problem with beer. I don't like it. I think it tastes like pee. I will drink anything else, just not beer. And since I am going to be drinking all night, at the local beverage supply mart I picked out something that has a relatively low alcoholic content. Anyway, Eric, one of the frat boys, calls me on the Smirnoff. Two worlds, that's a girly drink. Put that crap away and drink some beer. I decide to pull off a trick that I learned, in fact, from the GoonCon video. I sneak an empty Smirnoff bottle into my pocket and head off to the bathroom. There I fill up the bottle with regular tap water and put the bottle cap back on in such a way that it looks as if the bottle was unopened. I go back to the bar, walk up to Eric, and say, Hey, Eric, you think this is a girly drink? I'll show you, girly. Or something to that effect, and start chugging the water. Immediately, he rolls his eyes at me. Oh, for God's sake, Two Worlds, I know that's water. The whole bar starts laughing. Yeah, it's a good thing he told me he wasn't a frat boy. I never would have known. The thing is, we used to do bros icing bros all the time at parties. And I have chugged dozens of Smirnoff Ices. It's not very difficult, so I'm amazed to see someone pulling this shit at a college party in the first place. Let that interaction set the tone, but we do have another story about two worlds at a party. For some reasons, either there are way too few Missouri goons, or they are too lazy to organize a real goon meet. But the only time I've ever really met with goons, other than goon cons of course, and you know all about those, was when a few goons from UMR and Mizzo got together at the Res College on campus over Labor Day weekend last year to drink pretty much all night. There were like five or six of us, and one or two girls I think, so the odds were pretty good considering it was one UMR and two SA. When I got to their rooms, they were watching the Aristocrats, so they were drinking, of course, Aristocrat Vodka. To this day, I still curse the name of that vodka. Fuck you, Aristocrat Vodka. I kept drinking shot after shot after shot, I think the official count was like 10 shots of this cheap, shitty vodka that came in a plastic jug. The other goons also tell me I somehow went through an entire bottle of Captain Morgan that I had brought. The Captain Morgan was my idea. The cheap vodka was theirs. Somehow we got through the aristocrats, then started watching a Led Zeppelin concert DVD. The last thing I remember is standing in front of the bathroom mirror, mumbling, you're not that drunk, you're not that drunk, you're not that drunk, to myself. And then the next thing I knew it was 2 p.m. the next morning and I woke up on their couch. Everyone else was either asleep or passed out, probably the latter, and I had to pee. I went into the bathroom and that's when I saw it. Huge amounts of brownish liquidy substance all over the bathroom floor, all caked up into the toilet and everywhere. Oh crap. And then it came back to me. I had brief nightmarish flashbacks of throwing up everywhere, like basically my mouth had become a projectile missile launcher for vomit, and I remember some of the goons running into the bathroom and holding my head while I puked everywhere. Oh man. But I wanted to be a good goon brother and show goonerosity and stuff like that, so I took it upon myself to clean the entire bathroom of my vomited stomach acid while the other goons were asleep. It was all nice and shiny when I got done with it. By that time the other goons were starting to just wake up. Hey, two worlds, you threw up everywhere, man. He went to the bathroom. Hey, it's gone. You cleaned all of it up? He said as if I had done some monumental task like cleaning his entire dorm room, doing his homework, and alphabetizing his DVD collection. One by one, everyone else woke up, and then being goons, the first thing they did upon waking is check the internet. Holy shit, one of them yelled. The crocodile hunter is dead. And that 
was how I learned of Steve Irwin's death that day. Oh yeah, that sucked. Nothing but respect for Steve Irwin, of course. So Two Worlds is terrible at drinking, and he can only keep it together if he drinks like wine coolers. You'll notice he keeps talking about goon meets and goon cons. Well, these were presumably pretty awkward meetups between members of the Something Awful forums. I just want to stress how weird it was that Ariel went to one of these things with the explicit intention of losing his virginity. This guy comes down to the lobby, where I am waiting with Big Honky. He asks who is going to the titty bar tonight, because he is desperate to see boobies. We tell him he can see several sets of tits on Bourbon Street, but he says, I would like to have them rubbed in my face, thank you very much, and then, I don't want to die a virgin. At this point, Giant Honky and I realize we are dealing with something very sad and pitiful and hilarious. Honky asks him if he is trying to get laid on this trip. He pauses for a minute, looks around and says, Yeah, that would be one of my goals, with his hands on his hips. Surreal and ridiculous, for sure. Then the very next thing out of his mouth is, Does she have VD? Honky tells him he doesn't just shake a girl's hand and ask if she has AIDS. He nods and looks down with an, Oh right, oh right. We ask him how much money he would be willing to spend, and he replies immediately, 100 bucks. Honky probes him a little more about blowjobs and stuff, I can't remember exactly. The whole time he is saying things like, I'm not going to see boobies again for like 20 years, maybe even 30. I'm amazed that I'm just now mentioning this, but you might notice that Ariel avoids cursing, either by replacing the curses with other words or just censoring himself. This was because he swore an oath to not curse or cry until he lost his virginity. Which didn't happen until he was 26, well after the goon meet we're going to be reading about. Check out what happened. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I went to high school with you. I was in your 6th hour math study hall with you in Mrs. Freeze's class. Ten years ago, I swore an oath that at the moment I lost my virginity, you'd be the first to know. That moment has happened now. Fuck. Spread the word. Holy shit, are you for real? I'm not sure what I'd say either. He called people he hasn't seen since high school at 26 to tell them to spread the word that he finally got laid. Sorry I couldn't post earlier. I was kind of busy waiting for 5 hours in a bus station. Then once I got home I slept from 7am till 3. Anyway, thanks for the best freaking time of my life, guys. Everyone who was with me there at Big Daddy's, I owe my life to you. My first strip club experience was the best one I could have asked for. I was totally in a comfortable and safe atmosphere with friends I knew. I came to GoonCon with the express intention of having an adventure like seeing some boobs or going to a strip club and that's exactly what happened. When I registered for GoonCon, I put down my motto as Destiny is what you choose it to be. And it's amazing how that motto has come true. Thanks for a great time, guys. I mean it. By the way, I would like to clarify some things about the little-known events of Sunday night. I went out alone since no one would go with me, and I figured I would head on down to Big Daddy's again and see if I could get a few more dances. Some kind of 40-year-old crack whore approached me and started laying it on heavy with me, seeing if she couldn't con a visit to the VIP room out of me. I said that I had to go to an ATM to withdraw some money, and asked her to wait. Then I got out of there and swiftly ran away from there as fast as I could. I wandered around till I got to the side of Bourbon on the other side of St. Louis Street, and went to a club called Temptations. As soon as I sat down, crack whore number two sat down by me and started fondling me, which was strange as the rest of the strippers couldn't touch you. Long story short, she heavily pressured me to go with her to the VIP room, then finally just pulled me by the hand over there. Yes, I did hand over my debit card, but there really isn't any way in that sort of situation that wouldn't get you forcibly kicked out of that club if you don't pay up. As I later found out, my bank was smart about it, and froze my account when they saw a $200 charge to a place called Daiquiri Delights. Thank you, Bank of America, for calling me on my fucktardedness. I had to make several phone calls, but as of now, everything's all worked out, and I have a heck of a story to tell my Christian friends. Jeez, Ariel, you could always try saying no. So just like with porn, Two Worlds had some complicated feelings about strippers. His own sister had apparently become a stripper and started dating a man 15 years older than her, prompting Ariel to think that she was taken over by a body snatcher or something. This is from a chat log, but I'll just read his parts, because the other guy's really annoying. I'm saying my sister is no longer there. I don't have a sister anymore. The person that was my sister is gone from this world now. The person that's in her body now is someone else. The person that is my sister has gone to another shore, where I cannot follow. This person...
person that is in her body doesn't even come from this world. She comes from another place, a very bad place. Imagine an alternate reality where everything that was supposed to happen never did, and the worst possible outcome always happened. Imagine a world in which our country is in the worst possible outcome, the internet is in its worst possible outcome. You are in your worst possible outcome. Ask yourself, what's the worst way that something could have turned out? That's what this world is. It is a world of ruins. My sister is gone now. Someone else is in her place. Whenever I look into my sister's eyes, I see a different person. I see nothing, only blankness staring back at me. That person is not from here. Think about it. You know me. You know my greatest vulnerability, that of lust and sex and porn. If you had the power, what would be the biggest way you could strike back at me? Give me a really crushing blow. Twist the knife even. You would take away one of my family members, someone I love, and twist her into that. Someone, some power, brought that person into this world as a final insult to me. One great offense, so that I wouldn't be able to grow in faith anymore. Someone did this to me. Then he goes on to say it's the walking dude who is doing this to him, who is the main villain in many of Stephen King's books. The only explanation Ariel can come up with for his sister being a stripper is that someone's trying to hurt him. It's not like it's a job or anything. I just have one final piece of cringe to share with you. Two worlds, for some reason, decided to respond to everyone making fun of him by rapping. It's a little generous to call it rapping, but let's hear it. I'd just like to say that however cringy this sounds right now, it was probably even worse in the time and place that he made it. Well, you saying I'm a virgin and never gonna score, but fool, what makes you think I'm such a whore? Sex may be some game to you, but to my own self I'ma be true. You say my head's all shaped funny like an egg? Bust a step off and go back to Goon's JPEG. I may dress like I'm not Karen, but when I walk into the club I rock what I'm wearing. I'm a teacher, I'm a goon, I'm a writer, I'm a Christian, I'm a nerd, I'm a fighter. So while y'all be mocking me up in my face, my words and my teaching be making the world a better place. Y'all don't even make sense, you're self-hatin'. All talking about nerdy goons while you're all masturbating. Goons hatin' on goons ain't the thing to do, and that's why I call you Un Generation Perdue. Which is apparently French for the lost generation. It's always a great idea to add things people have to look up into your supposed freestyle rap. Anyway, it's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have something to say about Two Worlds or about my content in general, please let me hear it in the comments. I've been having a lot of fun covering this subject. If you're new here and want more similar content, consider subscribing. My channel is extremely stagnant, like 50 subs in the last month. Big thanks also to my generous patrons who help me out more directly over on Patreon. I'll be back with more soon. Well, have a great day, everyone, and make sure to party a little to balance out your Mr. C persona. Drink a few Smirnoff Ices or some shit.